Well, welcome aboard, boys. It's a beautiful day out here. Enjoying a little bit of fresh air and good old Mother Nature. We're going to go over some of the very basic things that will make you a better longbow shooter. One of them is the simplest way that I know of lining up to the target. I do not place my feet first or my shoulder first. You know, I do not stand exactly sideways or any of those things. I really allow my arrow to point the way. So rather than place my feet, the first thing I do is get my bow at 45 degrees. Next of all, I will point the arrow directly at the target, you see? And my elbow is on my gut, it's on my side. So, elbow on my side, the arrow is pointed directly at the target, and now I'll take a little step forward, and then lift up my back foot, and a little step back, and it will just go down in the most comfortable position. My body isn't going to put it in some weird spot. 45 degrees, elbow on the gut, point at the target, and I can also see the arrow in my periphery vision. Ken Wilhelm used to shoot from down here, so if you put your arrow down here, you can see it line up perfectly, just like the pointer on a compass. Okay, so 45 degrees, elbow on the gut, pointed at the target, lift up your front foot and put it down. Now just lift up the back one and put it down. Wherever it goes, it will just stay there. Okay, so that's a simple way of lining it up. And now when I put up the, the arrow, I can put the tip right on the center line. Make sure my bow is at 45 degrees. And now all I'm going to do is watch me turn my head. As I turn my head, can you see that my dominant eye is right over the target. Okay. Put it up at 45 degrees. A little tiny tug. Turn your head to the right and you will see, I'm not going to move the bow uh, just so that you can tell, but you can see that that arrow is under my right eye, dominant eye. So that's a very, very good thing to do, okay? Another thing is I want you to lean forward. I want you to reach forward as far as you can. That's what Horace Ford said, reach forward as far as you can. Well, there's a couple of ways of doing that that are better. For instance, if you, if you reach forward but also lean just a little bit, it will also help, okay? Also, this is not a close draw. This is a long draw. It's a far reach and a long draw, okay? So we can reach out, lean a little bit, and then draw it back, okay? So that's how to do it. We reach out all the way first before we draw. All the way out first, then we draw. We bring it right back as far as we can, right back by the ear. But that's a good way of doing it. Because if you keep pressure back here, it's hard to reach out. So don't keep the pressure back here. Reach out first, now put a little pressure on it, and look. Reach out first, Put a little pressure on it, then look. Reach out first, put a little pressure on it, and then look. And you'll see my eye. I keep squinting when I'm telling you this, but you don't have to squint at all. But you can see that that arrow is right under my right eye. That's important. Anyhow, that's a little bit of a talk about in shooting the English longbow. And uh, we'll be back in a minute and do some real shooting. <laughs> okay. Okay guys, so we have a uh, wild boar down here at, at 28 yards.
that's it. I'm not shooting another one. I'm not shooting another one. I refuse to shoot another one. <laughs> Anyhow, listen, when you're shooting at a target, there's a gap line. Now, a gap line is simply a line in which that if you're pointing at the target, the arc of the arrow goes into the target. And if you point at that spot, that arc will end up there. So that's a gap line. Uh, if you look at that spot, sometimes it will be called the point of aim. If you put your tip right there and look at it, that's point of aim. If you look at the center of the target, but put your tip there, that's gapping. And put the tip on the center line right at the gap, just like you had a rifle crosshair on it. Okay? And uh, th that will help you out quite a bit. But uh, this is another point that is often not realized. Uh, look, if you're looking at a target, uh, let's say I was looking at a target that's 20 yards. My arrow will be pointing under that target. Now, if I'm anchoring here, what I really do is point the arrow at the spot and I draw on that angle. If it's at 30 yards and I'm aiming higher, I'll put the tip on the target and I'll draw on this angle. You see how the angles are different? But I'm pointing right at the gap each time. One of the reasons why I think that that's valid is I was watching Howard Hill shoot and he was on a, sh on a boat and he was shooting at a uh, sailfish and when he shot his arm went straight up like this. It did not go like this. It went like this. And I realized he's pulling on 180 degrees. 180 degrees from the point of aim. 180 degrees from the point of aim. You get the idea? So pre-pick your shot, uh, pre-pick your gap, put it on that spot, keep it there as best you can. Also, when you draw back, there's a tendency for your arrow to go up. So watch out for that. And uh, also, as your arrow comes back towards you, it will appear to be going down. It will look farther and farther down as it comes back. And as you pull, you'll be pulling up. So those are things you have to realize, that as you move, this arrow wants to move up with the pressure or the tension, and it wants to move down, and you need to control it. You have to control it. I can't control it for you. You have to control it. But uh, I thought that this shot was so so kind of neat that I thought, ah, heck, I'm not even going to take another one. <laughs> okay, guys. Back in a minute. Okay, guys, we've got a bison down here at, uh, at 32 yards. I'm just going to leave that. That's right. Listen, put your tip right on the gap line, just like you had the crosshairs of a rifle there. Keep it there, and then draw back to your anchor. With a bow like this, there is no anchor. There is no specific anchor. That will do you more harm than good. But Anywhere along this line, it's more or less like a straight line, but anywhere along this line, you know, through the corner of your mouth, by your back tooth, or in behind your jaw, which is, you know, the best one for power and uh, uh, comfort. Well, I don't know about comfort because back here you're, you're straining a little bit. That's another thing. You want to let your right arm relax so much that the fingers, 
knuckles, hand, wrist, elbow, forearm muscles are all so relaxed that, that they start to be pulled apart. You're not holding them with muscle. They're relaxed enough that the joints almost start to separate. And that's the best way to have a, a release, you know. So if you can do that, just put it on the gap line. Lean forward and push it out as far as you can. Draw back with a relaxed arm until you come along your, your release line. Just relax, let it all fall in line. And uh, anyhow, I just thought I'd only take one shot because <laughs> that, that looked all, that, that looked good too, so what the heck, you know? But, uh, but anyhow, if you do that kind of stuff, you'll get some fairly reasonable hits, you know? And that's what it's all about, having a bit of fun. And uh, hitting is more fun than missing. Okay, back in a minute. Okay guys, we have a gazelle down here at, at 30 yards. Looks like we got him. The sun's getting a little bit darker. The woods get a bit dark. But the only disadvantage I ever find to holding a, a bow at 45 degrees is if there's a tree right there. But if there's not a tree there, or if you can only step a foot away, it's okay, you know? And uh, also, uh, Ray Spackman was saying that how uh, my new my new old arrows that I shoot full length arrows well <laughs> you can see that the feathers are gone in this one but anyhow the actual length of these are uh, 28 and 3 quarter inch from the inside of the knock down to the end of the point so they're not actually full length I had been cutting these ones and uh, I didn't have a, a paper tuning or anything I just cut them to 28 and 3 quarters for some reason anyhow that's the uh, the arrow and uh, also another fellow was uh, saying that he's shooting a 130 pound war bow and he's hitting his arm and he was wondering about it. So I told him, you know, to twist the string and raise the brace height a bit. And when he did, he stopped hitting his arm. So if you're hitting your arm, uh, raise up the brace height a little bit and that will help you out. But there's a couple of little hints and uh, let's see what we did down here on this shot down here. Okay, so we got our hit in here. But uh, there it is. Just like the plains of Africa, we've got the gazelle. 30 yards. Back in okay, guys, we have a caribou down here at 30 yards. Seems like every target is 30 yards today. A tree move, but anyhow, we hit it. The uh, there's a thing about shooting, and that's your head position. And I find that when my when my fingers come around and in behind my jaw, you can see how straight that looks, right? When my fingers come back by my ear. But there's that space behind my jaw, in between my jaw and my ear. You see how straight I can get that? So if you're anchoring up on the side of your face here, you may have to move your head out of the way to get a straight draw. But if you're pulling it in behind your ear, you don't have to move your head. You don't have to do any of those kinds of things. You see guys draw and they go, well, behind the jaw and in behind, or beside the ear, no head movement necessary whatsoever and uh, that's a big deal but that's uh, something that you can do with with this technique and 
uh, let's see if we can find out what we did with that arrow. Is it there? Okay, I guess that's it. It's all kind of blurry and fuzzy looking. Anyhow, back in a minute. Okay guys, this time we've got a buck down here at 26 yards. I'm enjoying shooting my old wooden arrows. Tell where that is. It's getting a little bit dark. And these arrows aren't all white. They're partially white, but uh, I think it's right. I think it's right on the heart, maybe. We'll see. Take another shot. That's close. I think that they're both sort of right in there. Anyhow, there's a deer. Uh, listen, guys. It is a big deal to get that arrow under your eye. And I want you to see why drawing behind the jaw or beside the, the ear, and the fingers going behind the jaw is so good, it's because you see how the arrow is on, I'll hold it low so you can see it, it's on an angle, right? But watch what happens when I go in behind my jaw, see how straight it gets? So I have enough space I can point it over there or here, in other words, visually I can line it up. And also I do not move my head, I do not have to move my head out of the way to get a straight draw, because there's space behind my jaw to go straight so you will not see me in this style you will not see me doing this kind of thing you know when you see the guys and you see their head go up and down and that and they're lining up well in this case it's just eye on the target tip on the target and with a relaxed arm just bring it in behind the jaw until it's straight that's it simple as that no head movement no. let's see if I can find this I couldn't even find the arrow on the last target. Yeah, there's our hits. Went blurry. Anyhow, there's our hits. I think you can see them. Okay. Yeah, I don't have to move my head. It just goes in behind the jaw. Have fun. Okay, guys, now let's, uh, Take a shot at this caribou. This one is at 32 yards, so it's the same thing. They're all 30, 32 yards or close to it today. Anyhow, uh, it's getting kind of dark, but I got a white arrow, so I'll probably be able to see it. Looks like a pretty good hit for this kind of light. So those are some of the things that we're doing, eh, with the longbow. Uh, it doesn't sound like much of a theory, but listen, stretch it out is a theory. When I try to anchor at the same spot, particularly like the corner of the mouth, but you know, the same spot, or under the chin, or side of the jaw, I don't quite get as good shots as if I push it on all the way. Much better to push it on all the way than to have a little kink or a little uh, twister curve in my elbow. 
I really find stretching it out there better. I find reaching out better. I find not drawing back at first, but reaching out at first all the way so that I ensure my push out and then draw back. I find that that's the better system. Out all the way, then draw back, you know? Uh, again, I just turn my head until I can see down that arrow with my right eye. So that's the kind of things I'm doing, but I'm pulling until I can't pull any farther, you know, it just starts to pull my wrist straight, pulls my finger straight, and off she goes. I'm not too concerned about where my hand goes after, you know, this follow through. I'm just sort of holding on and stretching it out. <laughs> Is that it? The stretch out theory? Anyhow, stretch it out. And uh, it seems to work better than, you know, trying to turn yourself into a machine that only draws so far, you know. I find it's better just to energize it. Anyhow, when you do that kind of stuff, you know, you'll get some hits. Okay, boys. Have fun. I'll talk to you later. Bye now. Okay, guys. Inside the woods, it's getting fairly dark. And uh, these cameras are always looks better than your own eyesight, I think. But anyhow, we've got a boar up here, if you can see it. And it's uh, 25 yards. And I've got a white arrow, or, you know, a, a, a light wooden colored arrow with a white feather. It should be okay. Right on him. Okay, guys, so, you know, that's another thing. White. White is the best color for arrows. Now, these I haven't sprayed white like my other ones, but you'll see they're all white feathers. And even when it gets into uh, fairly dark or dusk, you can still see them. And uh, basically, on that target there, I just knew from experience that I should be just a little bit under the center. And, uh, will it focus? Yeah, there it is. Anyhow, uh, there's our hit. It just doesn't focus very good when it's dark. But, uh, anyhow, guys, that's about it for me. I'd like to stay till midnight, but <laughs> I'll have to light the forest on fire so I can see. Anyhow, have fun. I'll talk to you later. Bye now.